So Google have just released Oppo, right, which is supposed to be this NA10 killer. So in today's video, obviously, we're going to compare it to NA10 and Lovable and really see, is this just some more AI slot or is it legit? Is that you can create these workflows just like this here. You can do it all through natural language, so like vibe code it essentially. And it creates this workflow of things to do, right, like tasks. And then at the end of it, you can actually have an app like this that you can share with people and that you can run etc. So what they're trying to do here really is do this type of any 10 workflow style thing, this no code workflow, but including a vibe coder really with it. Any 10 was blown up obviously and then Lovable started to uh, kind of join forces with it socially on YouTube where people were creating these dashboards for their any 10 workflows. Because normally with Lovable and Aten, you would add Superbase as the backend to store the data, whereas they don't have that. So really what Google have created here is essentially just a vibe coding front end platform, which has like Aten kind of built, um, although it is vibe coded, not actual coded, which kind of makes it harder for determining what <coughs> excuse me, what you can expect it to do. Anyway, as I was saying, essentially it just makes it harder to do when it's non-standard. So let's watch this video here um, and we'll actually check out what do they say about it. Then we'll go see what people are saying on here um, and then also Better Stack, which is a, a channel that I kind of watch here and there, what their guy is saying about it as well. Today I want to tell you about Opal. It's an experimental product exploring the future of building with AI models and prompts. We want to deliver a product that gives users more control and transparency over combining all the capabilities of Google models without having to code. Come build in the open with us and shape the future of this product. Let's see what it can do. First thing I want to mention here, Ellie or L here is almost 100% AI generated because of A, the way she talks, and B, the way she moves and expresses herself. Because if you just look on like a hey Gen, she looks exactly like some hey Gen avatar, such as like the little ones that I've made here that you can see on the channel. Now, side note, I see these AI avatars everywhere and honestly, they're doing my nothing. I hate it, I'll just be like running, listening to YouTube and then suddenly an ad will pop up and it'll be an AI guy or I'll go and check watching videos and AI ads pop up. It's honestly, they're driving me nuts because they're so obviously AI as well. So anyway, if we look on the platform, which for context, I can't even open up because I'm in the UK. Because if I sign in here, sign in with Google, sure, take all of my stuff, sure, yes, accepted all the terms and conditions. And then it would say, not available in my country yet. So I can't actually use it. I just have to watch other people use it. But essentially build, edit and share many AI apps using natural language. Some of the examples here, social media posts, product research, generate a playlist, learn with YouTube, so turn YouTube videos into quizzes, etc, etc. So really they're kind of trying to do away with SaaSes and let you build your own. And now this is what the interface looks like. On the left here, this is where you have your workflow where you can essentially just describe what you want to build here, vibe code if you want, or you can actually add the steps yourself. Then on the right hand side, you can see your preview, console theme, etc. So we have this example here where they're saying an app that takes a topic and use case context, an app that takes a topic and use case context as input and generates a blog post with a video, which is interesting here because essentially what I think they're trying to do with that is they'll now try to pull together all of Google's stuff. So Gemini is really good, Vio is really good. So they're trying to pull all this stuff together to then make their own platform which is this weird AI slop epidemic that we're in, which is everyone's just trying to grab a piece of the pie and suddenly companies that were normally in their own lane are seeing or at least thinking that everything is going to converge into like AGI and they just have to make their mark before it happens or they have to actually try to be the one to do it. Because everyone's trying to do these like website, auto website developers, people just, they can't, you know, sit back and watch Lovable make millions without trying to make some millions themselves. When they could just focus on their own lane. That's kind of how I'm looking at it. Because everyone now has an editor, everyone has a, an AI development thing. And sure, the end result is pretty cool. Although here, to be fair, for this tutorial, like the fact that this is the video, that is a rubbish video. And then look at her, talking pure AI, freaking out. So long and short of it for, is it actually any good? This is the verdict here from the guy, what's his name, does it tell me? 
So first we're presented with this free text input field. Let's type in Wall Street in New York as our starting point. Let's wait a couple more seconds and oh. Oh, look at that. Uh, okay, <laughs> that's not, oh God. It actually generated an AI image of the route path. That's not, that's, no. So as you can see, he has not fun. Now why is that? It's because he was trying to build the app and like it wasn't really working and things were just like not working as they should. Kind of like the Fire Studio, Firebase Studio AI app. Yeah, it kind of just reminds me of this Firebase Studio type of thing, which is like Google's just trying to put their hat in the ring, whether they're trying to just create some sort of presence to make themselves known or to try and take some market share back, or just to get your data to see how people are actually using AI. In any case, it just feels like that again. And for Firebase Studio, at the time when it came out, everyone's like, oh my god, it's going to kill Lovable. But in reality, it actually wasn't very good. So... I think it's kind of similar to that and also if we go on twitter x and look up opal or opal every time we like come across something they're not actually showing anything to work properly they're just like look i can make blog posts and stuff so i'm not very um and then all the other people actually are just showing you the demo video so totally not really that impressed and yeah generally is it gonna kill any in lovable probably not because if you think about it from this perspective, this here is just Google winging it to try and get their hat in the ring. Whereas any 10, their entire thing is these workflows. Lovable, their entire thing is these, all these front end websites. So, and I think they'll just start the back end as well. And obviously Superbase is integrated deeply into um, Lovable and to connect these up, you just use a webhook. So it's actually really quite simple. So anyway, let me know what you think. Until it's available in my country, I can't tell you what I think. Um, don't know if that's due to some dodgy UK or EU or European law or whatever for data. They're always trying to safeguard their data, apparently, whilst also trying to bring in digital currencies and stuff. But anyway, um, let me know what you think about Opal. Um, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.